I'm cleaning tourists today. Stopping at places I haven't stopped in decades. This is Laceyville, right off Route 6. The oldest house. <laughs> Hi there. I'm here. Yay. Hi there. Hi. How are you? Okay. Can I have a camera running or? Yes, I'm um, only open for 20 minutes, so you better tell me what you really want to see. I've never been here, so I'm just gonna wander around if oh, that's okay. That's fine. If you have any questions, just ask. So this was a house of who? This was built in 1781 by Dr. William Hooper Smith. And his son and his family lived here. Hmm. And then the Lacey family lived here for a while. and. It was used as a private home until the 70s, 1970s. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. And then they somehow gave it, what, to the Historical well, Society? Well, the Historical Society bought it in 1976. Oh. Huh. Yes, you can take pictures. That's fine. Video or whatever? Yep. Mm -hmm. And we have a little kitchen in here or well, something. Well, it's a kitchen now. We think it was probably, the house originally only went this far. This, this part's the addition in oh. 1791 along with that oh. and so we suspect they put that on it might have been an extra bedroom it might have been a room for somebody tending the fire who knows huh. i hear all kinds of noise outside in the back do you know what that might be or are they doing something out there or? oh probably mowing or sometimes the kids atv on the railroad tracks not oh. the safest thing to do but huh. then again so fireplace and how many fireplaces? There are five fireplaces. Oh. Um, the the chimney was actually built first, oh. um, and then the house was built around it. And um, there are three on this floor, two downstairs. So there's a basement that we can look at also. Yes. And what is the house? Just one floor? It's three floors. Oh. You would never know that from the street. <laughs> no. <laughs> And you're part of the Historical Society? That's or? correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do we have? Some things for sale? Jams and jellies? Yeah, and there's a souvenir book and a ah. historical fiction book and some postcards and note cards. And hmm. How much are the jams and jellies? Five. And they are made by a local person. Hmm. So in this room we have a lot of information about the river and huh. the canal. And that is information about the house. I call it the genealogy of the house, the earliest picture oh, we have okay. to the later pictures. This is and starts right here, or where? Where's the earliest? The earliest is that one on the bottom. That's, this one here. Yeah, that's probably from 1900. Mm. And this one is. Who? Those are the Morrisons. They lived here in the 1940s, so they really are kind of out of place. But <laughs> I didn't do that wall. And then it goes on to. Um, later, 1920 and so forth, and then 1940s and 50s, and then in the 70s the house looked very much as it does now. Um, hmm. It was run as an antique store for about three years, and, hmm. and then we bought it in 1976. Do you know what you, uh, what you paid for it in 76? $22,000. Hmm. And then how much land is with it? Only an acre. Acre? Mm -hmm. So we have like the railroad tracks right behind it. Correct. Now the railroad, of course, wasn't always there. The railroad came in in the 1850s mm. after the canal, which was on this side of the railroad, had come in in the mid 1830s. But up until that time, it was just a straight shot right to the river. And river boats would stop here. Um, many, many people have said that they heard from their grandfathers, grandmothers, great grandfathers, that people stayed here. I don't know whether it wasn't an official inn, but it could be that back in the late 1700s, people did stay here because it was quite a big house, especially for that time. Hmm. So the, is that the Susquehanna? What am I That's looking? The Susquehanna River. First white man. What is that about? Well, Etienne Brule was the first non-Native American, he was French, hmm. and he traveled the length of the North Branch of the Susquehanna oh. in 1616. 
So Captain John Smith was here too? Um, it says here 1608. What? Right. He he called some he called part of the river Susquehannocks or the tribe that lived around here. It, mm. I mean, the river was the highway for the Native Americans as well as for the settlers. So that's another tribe, the Powhatan Indians? Powhatan Indians. Mm -hmm. Susquehannocks. And right. then this thing here is saying what? That's the name? Well, Mi the Indians named the river um, the Meadows. Oh. Missiscombe. Missis and Mississippi probably has something to do with that, but I don't know uh, Native American languages. So Susquehanna came later, the name Susquehanna? Well, that's that's just part of the river terrace they call the Meadows, Mississippi. But Sakanhanek, Susquehanna, 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 Susquehannog, those are all the names of the river in various Native American dialects. Oh. Huh. And then we have the Susquehanna River. That's neat. Mm -hmm. I've been I've been wanting to stop in this place for about thirty years. Oh wow! Well, we're glad you finally made it. You look <laughs> very familiar. I do. Mm -hmm. What's your name? Vera. Mm -hmm. I used to run Interfaith. Oh That's really? Why you look familiar. Oh. You came in my office a few times to talk about things, or ah. I don't know. I I just. Is set up as a 1930s kitchen. Oh, 1930s kitchen. Well, again, wow, nice. this house was was here. You know, it's been here since 1781 for 233 years. So, mm. my mother used to wash her clo our clothes. On a washboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The little washboard. That one's kind of tiny. I, that's what I thought. The small <laughs> I thought, boy, what are you doing? A handkerchief on that? Yeah, that's a very small one. They make them different sizes. Oh, sure. And so that. You know. So I don't know why that one's small. Well, it's probably the only one that whoever put this room together could get. <laughs> That's I, sweet. I Original know. plaster right. ceiling. What? From 1781. You kidding? Nope. 1781. Mm -hmm. it's original plaster ceiling. Most of the rooms in the house have the original walls oh, and the original look at that. ceilings. Yeah. It's That's really, what we call uh, sturdy. Well, if you do something right, you don't have to do it over. That's what I say. Huh. Wow. Amazing. Now downstairs is the keeping room, which would have been where it's sort of like the 1781 version of a great room. That's where they would have done most of their uh, spinning, canning, mm. not so much cooking. That would have been done outside. But if you want to take a look down there, you're more than welcome to and go. Is there anything up here? There's upstairs as well. There is. Wow. So what do we do? We just open this door? We do. Now I'm going to lock the front door because I don't want anyone coming in while we're upstairs. Okay. I always tell, and let me go first, please. Okay, go so ahead. I can yeah. Turn on the light. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm here by myself. Look at this. I, right. I don't want anyone. Oh, look at this like stone here. Oh, that's is that a chimney? This is the chimney. Ah. The chimney is well, as I said, the, the oh. chimney was built first. It's ten foot by ten foot. Oh my goodness. And so nice. no Look at the clothes here. Well, well, this is our period clothing exhibit, which is why I'm very insistent on the door being locked. I, mm. I want to be able to make sure I'm with people who are... They always here. have such, what, tiny waists? Tiny. What is this? They were like skinny and tiny? Well, they were very small. <laughs> Women were probably about five feet. Huh? And they were, you know, like a size zero. <laughs> See, that's why I had the door locked. Somebody already coming. Well, oops. I'll just walk around. Let's see. I won't have. You, I'll miss your commentary. But huh. so, what do we got here? Amazing. This little bedroom. Look at these outfits. Wow. Look how tiny. More people are here. Trouble with people making sure the hours are right. Well, I even called yesterday and left a message. <laughs> so, I wanted to know. Okay, Vera. Where are you? I'm up to the front. We've got two more people. They're going to do it backwards. How are you? Oh Hi. my God. 
Oh, you. <laughs> Everybody's coming from. Oh Valley yeah, you State. look familiar. Uh, Karen Bobek, the representative. Oh. <laughs> How are you? Hi. Who's in my office? Right, I saw you guys. She's my the, friend. Yes. Yeah, right. well, she's your friend. Oh, That's is, so funny. The we're here. Clothing exhibit is that we start. This is what you do. This is what I That's do. That's what I told you, oh, Carol. This look is she does. Hi, Victorian. Well, no, this is reproduction. These are all original, unless I tell you otherwise. Okay. Hi, Victorian. These are called lingerie dresses. They are not wedding dresses. They were worn as such in the 1970s by people who found them in grandma's attic and said, this would be a neat dress. So they What are, does that mean? Do you wear it in public? Sure. Oh. They're very light and they're made to be worn oh, on a hot summer hot day. day. yeah. Now, you're going to have a course and a chemise underneath. You're still going <laughs> to sweat, but hey, you know. Oh. Yep. So, what year is this house? 1781. 17, see? Yeah, we'll go backwards. Oh. If we'll do the upstairs and then we'll go downstairs and then Vera can You know leave. I'm a member, don't you? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> proud, proud, <laughs> deuce paying member. Right. This is the and what's, what is this? What's Edwardian era. That's Edwardian, which after means? After Victoria died, her son, Edward, became the regent and then the king. Oh. So this is from 1905. Look at, look at this. Look at my Oh, that's good. Look at this one. <laughs> So what's the name of your historical society? Laceyville Area. Laceyville historical Area society. Historical. Or Oldest House Historical Society. Oh. Behind you is a linen two-piece dress. Do you have touching or maybe not? Well, but there's for gloves. I see how tiny this is. There are gloves. No, and that's okay. I, I just, the linen. Look at this waist here. Linen, no, no, no. What would you no. say the waist size is? That's really um, tiny. Probably about 26. Oh, it looks even small. You Could sure? be. I don't know. I don't. Didn't looks like a twenty. Looks, looks like Elizabeth one. Taylor and Gone with the Wind. You know. Oh, well, that was eighteen, oh, and that was a different era. We're getting wow. to that. But this is the Edwardian era. Like I said, about nineteen oh five to nineteen fourteen or so. This actually is a wedding dress. It's from nineteen sixteen, huh. and you can see the waistline was dropping, and the flapper stuff was starting uh, to come in. A wedding dress. In the twenties, huh? that would have been even shorter. But this is, I don't know if you watch Downton Abbey, but I can yeah, see, yeah, I can see yeah. Lady Edith in that dress. And it comes with the, the gloves and the hose. And the hose. Huh. Mm -hmm. oh, the stockings that she wore. Oh, my goodness. Hang on. Everybody should stay together. Now, tell me about the Silvera, the, the team, the baseball. What's that all That's about? from 1902. It's an original baseball uniform. From, do you know, was there a There was a team in Here? Silvera. In Silvera. Hence the name. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where is Silvera? Um, if you go up 367. Okay. Huh. And what do we have oh, here? Portraits. Oh, this is another wedding dress must be. It is, yes. Excuse Look at this me. one. Edwin and Sarah Marie. They, were, they never lived here, but they were, whoops, there we go. They were relatives of the Lacey family who did live here. <gasps> now this room. Yes. We wear that jacket that's, today. That's a reproduction. Oh, okay. Both. This is a Spencer. Huh. That's what it's called. That's a reproduction. That's the kind of dress that would have been worn in 1781 when this house was built. This is an actual real dress from 1835. Um, this is the Regency period, uh, Jane Austen, and that's what I'm wearing also, Jane Austen. Oh. That's reproduction. That's original. From and what is that? A wedding for a guy or what? Oh uh, no, it's just a work clothes. And somebody yesterday said work clothes, white. That's what they said, and I said, well, you take what you can get. You know? That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the shirt is linen from France from oh. 1830 something. Wow. Um, and then this, as I said, I've got this done as a wedding ensemble. Until Victoria married Albert, most people didn't wear white for a wedding. Hmm. If they were rich, they'd wear gold or silver. Huh. And bonnets were what they wore. They just threw a veil over the bonnet. That's why this is done this way. Oh. And here's her little double ruffle cap, which is also from 1830 or 1832. Um, so this is very authentic to what it would have been because they didn't really make wedding veils per se. They would just get a nice piece of lace and flop it over their bonnet and that was the end of that. And why white then? Like you said it didn't Victoria really wore white. She did. And she's the one that set the fashion. How? About, and I wonder why she mm. chose white. Who knows? Who knows? Interesting. This is our little chest of unmentionables. <laughs> I see a corset in there. I want to show you ladies, so you'll like this one. Now, think about it. If you have a corset on, yeah. you can't wear underwear. Because okay. you can't pull it down and pull it up. Right, right. The original crotchless underwear. Oh, for it. Oh, wow. for heaven's sake. How else <laughs> could you 
And actually, until the Civil War period, people didn't even wear anything. This is nice. the, the main wedding. Look at this. Now that's, oh, I was in London, I was in England in, in May. Oh, and look I, at that, how the train comes from the shoulder. That's yeah. called a sack back dress, and sack I almost back. wore my sack back today, but I don't have, I don't go out to here, mine only go out to there. But oh. anyway, this is from the Victorian Albert Museum in London, because I went there, and I, got, I looked to see, oh, I wonder what's on hmm. at the V&A, and it was a wedding exhibit. I was like, I can't believe oh, it. Wow. So I, I cried. They had three dresses mm. from before 1780. And of course, we don't have any. The earliest we have is that one in there. But so there's an example of a very fancy wedding dress from 1750, I think. This is the um, 1850. That, that dress in there was like 1830. So go forward about 20 or 25 years. This is Civil War period. Hmm. Uh, it would have been worn, and it is shown with a hoop skirt. Look at the parasol. Matching parasol. It was given to us by uh, Mrs. Swackhammer. It was her grandmother's. Oh, 1851. Swackhammer. And you might say plaid. Hmm. Well, they didn't it? always have the money to have a white dress that they'd never wear again. Even though white by then had come into fashion. After Victoria married Albert in 1836. So, hmm. they would use plaid because they had to match the fabric matched the pattern and there was a lot of waste so that showed that they were wealthy and mm. able to able to do that fast forward again another 20 years or so and this is Excuse late me, look at the height that, of these was, people look how short they are also? that's a wedding dress okay Ooh. yeah that's See. a wedding dress oh, thank you and then yeah i, I know about, about, about four eight people. four, four eight, eight four or eight, eight, short. eight five you know mm. uh, i would have been considered an amazon all, all of amazon us. all of us Anyway, this is late 1870s, so about 20, uh, 20 years after the Civil War, and you can see the skirts are getting smaller. This would have been worn with a crinoline, and there probably would have been, I didn't put one in, a bustle back here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, veils were not made as wedding veils as such until the middle of the 1800s. That one in there, was just you just threw it over your bonnet. This is a real wedding veil from about that time. French lace. It's amazing. It's still intact. It's it hasn't beautiful. just like even yeah, I disintegrated. Know, I Where'd know. you get that, Deborah? Auctions. auctions. I'm a busy girl. I have too much time on my hands. <laughs> this was loaned to us for the exhibit by Gail James. It's her great-great-grandmother's dress. Oh, Ada. Look at the waist on that. Ada mm. Jennings Smales. Tiny, tiny. Yes, tiny. Look in the back. Oh, Look how tiny. Word. Mm. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, and that was her wedding? This is her wedding dress. And again, yeah. White, not very useful. Brown silk, useful. And it's beautiful. Bugle beads and everything. Absolutely stunning. Mm. Really, really pretty. See the beads, yeah. Right, and probably it had a little puffy sleeves and it probably would have been had a, would have been worn with a bustle in the back. This is from eighteen eighty nine. Now why do they do the bustles? What does that mean? Well, to them? things change you know, like that like that dress, they had what they're called panniers on either side, so they would poof down on the side. Then the panniers kind of floated and died down and it went into this thing. Then the next thing you know, the waistline dropped back down and instead of panniers you had the hoops. Then that kind of floated down, and then you had the bustle. So it's kinda like there's always something going around a Sticking out hips. somewhere, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did it, it have any moves. meaning or any function? Probably the ones on, I think, uh, fertility, the, especially the ones on the side. Think of the old Venus of whatever, Willing Gutton or whatever that. Demila? No, 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 no. Way, 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 way before. The, the, the fertility goddesses all had very rounded hips. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. you know. And the bustle. Did they stash gutton. things in there? Maybe it's like no, a hiding they place? Would, no, they have little pocket things. A, a woman, like yesterday I was wearing a colonial outfit. Mm. And it, it had the, the side things and the panniers. And there would have been slits underneath the pannier in the dress, in mm. the skirt part. And then little pockets, like little 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 bags that you could have stuck your finger in and stored things in. Oh. This, we're now back to the Edwardian era. Um, it's white. Again, that's when lingerie dresses were in fashion. So this would probably have, this was made, this is from the Diamond family estate, which I was able to get at a, um, an auction. And beautifully embroidered, and I love the hat. The hat just absolutely kills me. <laughs> it's beautiful. But mm. this would have been made, worn for the wedding, and then worn again for, you know, nice summer social occasions. Nothing 
the, it, if it had been a wealthy family, it would have been the long satin or silk. Oh, at this that time it would silk. be satin or silk. And this is silk. But not but necessarily it's white. Okay. Right. And then this is, it, it, it could have been white, but that would have been somebody who was extremely wealthy. Wow. So most normal people, if they did white, went with something like that. So now we're going to go downstairs. Now, when the house was built, there was no railroad and there was no canal. So if you look out the windows and try to imagine, mm. if you're not there, it would have just been a gentle slope straight to the river. Oh, this is like ground level back here, right? Eh? It is. Oh, yeah. this is and nice. It, it there would have been a slope. The patio that's out there, which really means a leading, um, huh. was built in the 1940s. But up until then, this was just a straight shot right to the river. The canal was in the 1830s, the railroad in the 1850s. But until then, uh, the river was the highway. People would have come up the river and stopped here. This is the original front door which when you read my book is very important. This is the front door? The house was built to face the river. I had one oh. woman come in and she said, I have to see the front door. I said, huh. okay. And she's like, oh. she said, I read your book. I was like, oh, okay, now I understand. Because wow. she's like, this is the front door. Where is he in China? Yeah, 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 Shh, don't say anything. <laughs> and this is cool down here, so it's nice it in the summer, it's, I would think, right? right, and they would have been here in the summer. They probably oh. wouldn't have even slept here. So they would cook down here maybe too? Mostly outside. Oh, mostly for outside? For danger of fire. Oh. Um, they would have done some light cooking in here, maybe some baking. Um, there are two uh, fireplaces here. There's one around back that looks just like this. It's a 10 foot by 10 foot chimney. So this house has not had fire? Because as you, I always hear of so much fire. No fire, right? In the life of it. Okay, you're knocking, you're knocking wood. These are so original that's good. axe marks, if you look. How about that? Mm -hmm. And as I said, the people who lived here really didn't <coughs> screw around with it much, so we're really lucky. Now, um, I took the tour before, Deborah. Who built it and why? William Hooker Smith, who was a doctor. He had a lot of interest in Plains Township and mining and stuff like that. Oh. He was kind of ahead of his time. He was with Sullivan when, on Sullivan's March. Oh, okay. We did. theorize, we do not know, we have no proof, but we theorize logically that he was on the river with General Sullivan and saw this chunk of land. You know, he was given two 300-acre tracts of land. Okay. And we think perhaps in service, in payment for his service, because they did that a lot back then. They gave people land instead of giving them money. 1781. They have to keep on asking that 1781. But that's Sullivan's March when they destroyed all those villages, and Indian they, villages. They, they, right, they pushed the Native Americans north to Ithaca. Because I just read a little placard up the road. It said 40 villages were mm -hmm. destroyed. It was a horrible thing. Horrible thing, horrible, yeah. Horrible, horrible. But in those days, he was ridding the countryside of the Red Savage, you know. Okay. And then they went, whatever, whoever was left went up to Ithaca? They, they pushed them that far north. Uh -huh. There were still some. But, you know, again, in those days, this was a very scary area. You know? hmm. So... So this would be where they did all their, you know, the lessons the children would have played. They would have done the spinning, the weaving, the canning, whatever. We do have a restroom in case anybody's desperate. Oh, I see the restroom. I think the Christmas tree was here. Wasn't there, it? there are usually Christmas trees. On oh, here's the about the yeah, march. I remember oh. the one here. When I, yeah, it must have been that time of year I came. Mm -hmm. Sullivan's March, Tioga Point. That's cool. Twelve days. Neat. Oh, thanks, very neat. Yes, and he was ill for part of the time and went up by river, so by boat. So Sullivan. We, yeah, so we know that his physician would have been with him, and we theorize from that that possibly um, William Hooker Smith saw this area and said, oh, this is nice, and Sullivan said, good, it's yours. <laughs> and William Hooker Smith's first wife died. He then married a Marjorie Kellogg, who was a widow. Her husband died in, and she escaped from the Wyoming Massacre. So yeah, he had and a what, lot of what happened with the Wyoming there. massacre? The That's down in the valley where oh. there were a lot of the the Native Americans killed a lot of white the Connecticut people. settlers. Yeah, so. that's an interesting. Part of yeah. Too. Okay, huh. so up we go. It was um, yeah. I guess it must have been because I remember getting all of the cookies in here. Yes. Let me just get that. Yeah. 
forgot to hit. Of course, you know me, so I don't know how special that is. It's very special. And then this one is just that about the house. That one is the souvenir book. That's 10 and this is 15. Oh. And this is by you also or no? I put it together. That oh. I put together along with, oh. you know, I did the draft and then a couple other people said, well, we're not sure about this and we should put something in about that. And, you know, I, as long as it's a small committee, it's okay. Too many people, it's like, uh, but there were just two of them. So oh, like it eight, does? No, I think it's five o'clock. Is it five? Really? Okay,